Let's have a look how we actually gonna derive the test for heteroscedasticity now. Recall that this is where we stop. We are looking for the relationship between the variation of the error term and the independent variable in our regression model. Now, in statistics, whenever we test for something, we use sample data. Why is that? Because the sample data is an estimate of the population data. And we do not have access of the entire population, so we're going to use estimates of the variation of the error term. We are literally going to use actual error terms based on our regressions that we have. So this is going to be u to the power of 2, the residual to the power of 2, hat, the ones that we estimate. Now let me show where this is coming from. This is coming from here. This is the relationship of the regression line, which is the food expenditures regressed based on income, based on the residual in the sample. And let, let's, let's prove why this makes sense. Let's prove that y equals to that. So what is this? Alpha hat plus beta hat times income is the, is the predicted value. This is the predicted value in the, in the sample. So this is y hat. Now what is what is going to be u hat, this is the predicted error. This is the difference that we actually observe between the real value y minus the estimated value of y. Now let's do the math to prove that this is true. Well, over here we have the y hat minus 1 y hat cancels out, so we're left with just the real value of y. And this is also the real value of y. y equals to y, so the math works out. The estimated value of the error term is based on this relationship. We're looking at the real observation, we're, we're checking how much of it we estimated by ourselves, and the remaining is the estimated error that happens. That's where we take the data from. These are real numbers that we compute. Now, based on these real numbers, we want to see whether this variation is significantly different. First of all, we have a look graphically that beyond a certain point, so beyond a certain income level, the variation is becoming bigger. So graphically, we already have a hypothesis that yes, the variation should be different, but graph graphs are not enough, we gotta run tests. So we're gonna compare the variation that happens here relative to the variation that happens in this case, and we wanna see if they are significantly different. So the test that we're running is this. The variation in the first subsample, let's call this subsample that we are subdividing, this one, u1 to the power of 2, is equal to u2 to the power of 2. So these variations are equal or not, or they are different. That's what we are running. So how do we run a test based on variation? We have an f test on variation, and that's how it's going to look like. Our f test is going to be the ratio between them. So this is an f test on variation where we compute the ratio between the variation in the bigger the bigger variation which is in the second subsample so we're gonna take the variation in the second subsample based on what we estimate so this is the sum of the squared residuals that, that's how we read it right what is SSR sum of squared re residuals these are the squared residuals this is the sum the sum starts from the first term until uh, the number of observations in the second subsample this is the second subsample n2 this is n1 uh, divided by the number of observations. So the number of observations in the second subsamples. Uh, this subsample word is kind of confusing, so I'm trying. I'm going to try to to use it less. And this one over here, uh, also the same thing. The sum of squared residuals that happen in the first group. Uh, and here we have the residuals of that group, also to the power of 2, divided by the number of observations in that group. Now this f value is going to show us whether these variations are significantly different from each other, because we can compare this with the critical value, and we're going to see. If this is much larger than 1, if this is much larger than 1, then the variation in the second group is much larger than the variation in the first group, giving us evidence that indeed the variation, the variation is different. So there is a relationship, there is a relationship between the independent variable and the variation, so that the, um, the variation of the error term increases with the independent variable, giving us proof for heteroscedasticity. That's the highlight. Hope this all makes sense. In the next video, we're going to see a different test for heteroscedasticity.